I have been interested in learning about FPGA programming for some time. Recently, I learned about the inexpensive Tang Nano 9K development board, so I bought one from Amazon for $25. People appear to have varying experiences with this board, so this video presents how I got started with it on Ubuntu 22.04. Later, I'll make a video about a somewhat more sophisticated project using it. The board contains a Goen GW1NR-LV9 FPGA. This is a smallish FPGA, but it's certainly large enough for some interesting experiments. The board has a USB-C connector that's used for power and programming, and there are two push buttons that are connected to pins on the FPGA, and also six LEDs are connected to pins on the, on the FPGA. And there are several video connectors. There's an HDMI on the right, that I'm not sure fully complies to the HDMI standard, and a couple of small connectors to attach LCD displays by things like SPI. And uh, finally on the bottom, there's a, some sort of a flashcard socket. Next, I'll describe how to get started using Linux, specifically Ubuntu 22.04, and using the Goen EDA software. To download the Goen software, go to goenseme.com's website, shown here, and it forces you to create an account and uh, and log in. So do that. And then under products, Gowan EDA, you can get to this page here, the Gowan EDA home, and then just click on Gowan EDA, download. And um, I'm going to run this on Ubuntu 2204. So I click on software for Linux. And the one you want is this education package, which doesn't require a license and apparently works for smallish products, which is good for me. So I click there. And it starts to download, I hope. Yes. And then that'll take a little bit of time, so we'll wait for that. So download's complete. And uh, you'll notice there's some user guides and things to, to look at here. There's actually quite a bit of documentation, only it often doesn't answer my questions very well. So maybe that's my problem more than theirs. Anyway, we're done with the website. So now to install on Linux is pretty simple. Um, just make a directory, I guess. And, um, and then just untar the tarball, which takes a little while. OK, now that's complete. And so that created a couple of directories, one of which is IDE. So to run the IDE, you can just say IDE bin Gowan IDE. And I'll put that in the background. And um, that's the IDE, including some recent projects, which are no longer there. Um, I guess it must save some data someplace. So anyway, the uh, the uh, IDE installation goes very easily, at least on Ubuntu 2204. But this idea of just having a tarball and running a binary in it can suffer from library dependencies. So I noticed that that failed when I tried this on Fedora. But it did work for me on Ubuntu 2204. To be honest, I think you might be better off running, running this Gowan software on Windows, but I haven't tried that. There are a few things that I know don't work, and one is that the programmer doesn't work for me under Linux. I've been unable to make that work despite a little bit of tinkering. I googled that, and uh, some of, several people suggested, well, just use Open FPGA Loader. So that's that's what we'll do, and that's what's worked for me. More importantly, there's a there's a scope debug tool somewhere in here that um, also does not work for me under under Linux, and there's I don't know a workaround for that. I'm going to install Open FPGA Loader by building it from source, um, again on Ubuntu 2204. So I go to the GitHub website for it, which is here. You can find that by Google easily enough. And uh, so grab the uh, code. So I'll say git clone. And what I failed to copy from there, copy to clipboard. Paste, that worked. So we do the git clone. And then um, there's open FPGA loader. And then the website gives some instructions on install, including, well, I think it did install. OK, here we go. So, um, so building from source, it first recommends installing a bunch of packages. So just do that. I've already done it, so I won't repeat it. And I'm happy with UDEV being on. So I can just kind of go down here 
and it's follow the instructions mkdir build um, cd build c make i don't think i need the dash dash build just just dash dash okay and um, then i'm going to do make minus j2 because i have two processors on this machine now the build is complete that took oh five minutes or so and i don't think i'm going to officially install it because i don't think i need to i think i can run the binary directly just from this directory let's see if it does anything at all yep so that that looks good so the next thing we we need a a file to try to load onto the FPGA to see if that works. Ah, but one thing is to avoid having to run the the uh, FPGA programmer as root. There's these instructions here about UDEV, so um, good idea to follow those. Now we'll use the IDE to make the hello world of FPGA projects. This will be one that connects one of the buttons, one of the two buttons on the FP, FPGA board to one of the LEDs and uh, the other button to another LED. And so to create a project, we go to New, Create Project, um, give it a name that we like. We'll call it Button LED. That looks right. And then the series of the FPGA on the Tang Nano 9K is GW1NR. That's very important to pick correctly. And then in this IDE, the only one supported is this one. So it happens to be the correct one, fortunately. So we pick it and say next and finish. And then the next thing we need to do is to add, add a fair log file. So we'll give that a name. I'll call it top. And now we have to type in the Verilog that, that defines our design. And watching me type is boring, so I'm going to paste it. like so, and then press control S to save it. And so what this is doing is it's, is it's well, this is the top level module, which is a module that doesn't include any other modules. So every Verilog program has to have a top level module. And in this case, be, between the parentheses here, these are all of the connections off the FPGA. So this is saying we have an input coming from button one, an input coming from button two, and then an output going to two of the LEDs. And then the Verilog magic, this assigned is essentially connecting like one wire to another. And so it's saying button one connects to LED zero and button two connects to LED one. And then when you press button one, LED zero will light and so on. All right, so we've saved this. So now we have to try to synthesize it. And so if I click run synthesize, um, it says that it completed. And incidentally, we can go to tools, schematic viewer, and take a look at the design. And it's showing the two buttons connected to the two LEDs. So we don't need that anymore. So now the next thing we have to do is to tell the, uh, the place and route process what, what uh, pins on the FPGA these correspond to. And you just have to know that from the documentation in the schematic. But that goes into a constraint file. And to create a constraint file, we have we, the easiest way is to run the, yeah, I think it's the floor planner IDE. So it says it doesn't include a CST file, a constraint file. Do you want to create one? Yes. And that pops up this, this thing here, which I'll make a little bit bigger. And so the easiest way to do this is to click on package view, which then shows you all of the pins on our FPGA and on, on, on I.O. constraints. That's what we, we need. And um, so one thing you can do is you can like drag, click here for button one location and drag that to the pin that this connects to. And button one happens to connect to pin four on, on the Tang Nano, Nano 9K. And uh, button two connects to three. And LED zero, I think connects to 10. And LED one connects to 11. You could also just type, you know, four, three, 10, 11. And then you have to check all of this other stuff. And one key is the IO type. And you just kind of have to know that the LED and the uh, buttons are using LVC CMOS uh, 1.8 volt connection. So these are correct. If you're using 3.3 volt pins, you actually have to change that, which you do like this. 
for a 3.3 volt connection, but ours is, I think, 1.8. So we leave that alone. So now we click here to save the constraints editor and make that go away. And now there's a text file here by for the constraints file, which the, uh, the GUI just produced. And we, we could edit this by hand if we had to. Um, but now we click on this uh, run place and route. And so that creates the bit file that we need to program onto the FPGA. Now, my computer is not very fast, so even this small project takes a little bit of time. So running routing now, and now it's almost complete. Now it's complete. So to um, run the file on the FPGA board, you can either load it into memory or you can load it into flash. And so I've got a, let's see, yeah, just a little script file for load, for load memory. And that runs FPGA loader, uh, minus B to select the Tang Nano 9K board here, and then minus M to load to memory, and then this is the file to, to load. So let's try it. So I can do load mem, and let's see, I'm in projects. Uh, what did I call it? Button LED or something like that? Yes. And then IMPL, the implementation, and if I hit tab, it'll, it'll remind me PNR. And, uh, and then the file we want is the one that ends in .fs. Okay, so now it's loaded to memory. And if we wanted to load it to flash, we, we could uh, replace the minus M with a, with a minus F. You can see it's working after we loaded the file to the FPGA. When you press the buttons, the LEDs light, so it works as expected. Okay, that's how you get started with the Tang Nano 9K on Ubuntu 22.04 Linux. I'll put some links to information sources below, one of which is this wiki. Later, I'll post a video about doing something a little more complicated with this FPGA and a Raspberry Pi. I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching.